Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwalben's Nest. Welcome to my channel. Today is another episode of Timber Tuesday where all of my projects are wood related. Project number one is using these long sticks that you can get from the dollar stores. Mine are from Dollarama and they're really easy to cut using your miter box and just a regular saw. So I'm going to glue them together and make two house shapes. One is going to be a little larger than the other. Then I'm going to hold them together with my clamps to make sure that the glue has a chance to set before I move on further. I cut one to be 10 inches high and the other one to be eight inches high because these are approximately 18 inches in length. I have one of these little envelopes from the Dollar Tree. This one is metal and it was around Valentine's when I picked these up. So of course it is pink with a red heart. I scraped off the sticker and now I'm just giving a coat of matte clear spray paint and that's just going to dull the shine a little bit and make it a little bit easier for me to paint and have the paint stick. Once it's dry, I'm just going to give it one good coat of my gray chalk paint. This is just a black and a white latex paint that I mixed together and added some talc to. I'm also going to give the houses one coat of dark gray paint as well. I'm going to give both of these houses a buffalo check pattern. For this house in particular, I'm going to give it a diamond pattern rather than a straight across. So it's more of a plaid pattern rather than a buffalo check. The other house will get a true buffalo check. If you're interested in learning how to do buffalo check, I do have a tutorial and I will link that down in my description box. Basically what you do is map out your pattern using a piece of tape as your spacer. Then you'll put some pieces of tape down to make your stripes, lift up the spacer tape and then put it down for the next stripe. Then you go ahead and you paint this one layer and then you'll be doing two other layers with the stripes and the tape as well. Normally when you start a buffalo check pattern, you start with the lightest color first and work your way to the darkest color. Since I had already painted these dark gray, I'm just going to wing it. It's gonna look a little different, but that's okay. I'm going to do the white first and then the black. So I'll have gray, white, and black. On the diamond pattern, I'm going to do three colors as well, but I'm gonna do just white, light gray, and then the dark gray again. You end up with multiple layers of paint on your project, but I think the result is worth it. You could also just use scrapbook paper and cover up the houses that way. I don't ever find the type of scrapbook paper like this at my craft stores, so unfortunately I just have to either print it off or paint it. And I think painting it makes it look a lot nicer. As you can see here, I painted the envelope white now, and I'm just going to take some fine grit sandpaper and go along all of the little edges, making sure that I only sand down enough to show the gray underneath. I don't want any of that pink showing up. I used hot glue to attach the envelope to the Buffalo check house. And now I'm just using a glue stick to apply a label to this little wood round. This is a wood round that came in a pack of six from the Dollar Tree. There were two circles, two hearts, and two squares. And these are really nice and thick. So this sign says fresh flower market, seeds, stems, and blooms. I'm just going to make sure that it's glued on there really well, crease the edges with my finger, and then use the sandpaper to tear off the rest of the excess paper. Then I'll just glue it to the top of the house. I'm taking some floral foam and I'm going to push it into the envelope so I can add some florals and greenery. I decided that it looked a little unfinished without a roof on the house. So I just cut out some of my garden stakes to the right length. I'm going to hot glue them to the top of the house and then paint them white. I used some little pink florals that are really pretty delicate flowers and a little bit of some boxwood greenery and I think this project is really stunning. It's so pretty. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to part with it. Thank you. 
before we get into the next project, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Exter. Exter is a company that started by taking a traditional wallet and making it smart. They added a tracking system to it so you would never be able to lose it. And now they're moving into some beautiful carrying cases and laptop sleeves. It has really quick card access, so everything's right at your fingertips. And with the tracker card, you can connect it to your phone so you'll never lose track of your wallet. I have been wanting one of these card wallets for a really long time. So when Exter reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try some of their products, I said, absolutely. I also received this tracker card and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. I don't like taking a huge purse into the store. I wanna take something small and compact. As soon as you hit the button, all of your cards pop out for easy access and then you just simply push them back in and then you can tuck it away in your purse, in your pocket, in your jeans, whatever works for you. The extra tracker card not only tracks your wallet, it can track your phone. So all you have to do is press that center button a couple of times and your phone will ring. No more searching around the house for your phone or getting family and friends to text you so you can find it. It's really easy to connect. All you do is install the app that's on the back of the tracker card, follow the instructions, and then your phone will be connected to the tracker card. I'll have a link for extra down in my description box. So please, when you're done this video, go click on that link and check out their website. You're sure to find something that will suit your needs. I have a few rolling pins that I'm going to display on the top of my cupboards in my kitchen, but I wanted to add this smaller one to it. So I'm starting by just painting the handles white and now I'm just giving them a black stripe up and down and then I'm going to give them a gray stripe as you see here I did that across and now I'm going back with the black and covering up one of the gray squares to create a proper buffalo check. Once they're all dry I'm going to give them a really good sanding because I want that buffalo check to look really old and worn like the rolling pin has been used lots and lots and I think it turned out pretty cute. It's not perfectly buffalo check, but I'm okay with that. Thanks so much for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your support. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. This project goes with the rolling pin, so I'll show you both of them when I'm done this project. I've got this crate. I love the crate, but I don't love the words on it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of the wording here. They are cutouts. And if it would have said something different, like maybe farm fresh or home, I probably would have left it. This is going to be the back of my crate, so you're not really going to see this, but I wanted to just fix it up anyway. So the polyfill is dry and I'm just taking some fine grit sandpaper and just sanding down all of the rough edges. You can still kind of see the words garden tools through. Once I paint it, it's going to be okay, but you're still going to feel a little bit of the bumps, but I'm okay with that. It's all rustic, right? I made a label using my Cricut Explore 3 and Design Space, but if you don't have a Cricut, don't get discouraged. I know a lot of us crafters on YouTube are using Cricut machines. If you don't have the budget for one, there are many different ways that you can get the same type of look. Go ahead and use the free printables. This will be available on my website. You can also use rub-on transfers or letter stickers or even stencils. And if you have to do it one letter at a time, that's okay. That's how I started out and I really still do love a stenciled look. 
The other thing that happens sometimes with this Cricut paper and transfer tape is that it pulls off some of the paint, especially when you're working with chalk paint. So it's always best to seal your project with the paint first and then let it cure overnight before you apply anything with your Cricut. I had a whole other couple of words in between the Cornerstone Cafe and the Fresh Daily, but those didn't work at all, so I ended up having to trash them. So I'm just going to leave it like this, and now I'm just taking a really rough grit sandpaper. I believe this is probably at least an 80 grit, possibly a 60, and just my hand sander here, and I'm just going to go ahead and rough it down right down to the wood. I'm just going to get rid of all of that paint, all of that green that shows up and just get a lot of that wonderful wood showing through. This project was in the back of my mind for a really long time and I'm so excited that I finally got it complete. I think it looks amazing on the top of my cupboards. Let me know what you think. For this project, I'm starting off by painting this 18 inch wood round. I got this from a local Facebook marketplace seller who sells all sorts of different sizes. I believe this 18 inch round was only $12. So I was really excited to find a whole bunch of them for not that much money. Anyhow, I'm gonna give it a couple of good coats of my DIY chalk paint in white. I also put some spindle feet on them and I glued that with my weld bond glue. Now, while I wait for the round to dry, I'm going to take this vintage hardware. This came off of an old dresser that I have, and I keep the legs, the knobs, everything, you name it, any wood that's salvageable, I keep it, because I know at some point in the future, I will probably need it. I'm just gonna give these a couple of coats of black chalk paint. I don't need these to have full coverage because I know they're gonna get scratched off, but I am going to seal them afterwards with some clear matte spray. I'm going to put this stencil on it. It's all in one piece. I got a pack of them from Joanne Fabrics quite a few years ago. There are a couple of missing pieces down at the bottom, but I'm not going to put any paint on those letters and I'll fix them by hand later. I'm using a makeup sponge and some medium gray chalk paint. I wanted this to have a little bit of a different color rather than just white and black. And the makeup sponge, I'm making sure that I offload the paint because I don't want it to bleed. It did in a couple of areas, but they were really easy fixes with a little bit of white paint. Even though I'm obsessed with tissue paper printing and I love using my Cricut, this is still so satisfying to be able to peel up that stencil to show this beautiful design. I've measured out where the handles are going to go and instead of leaving the handles standing up, so instead of putting a screw down at the bottom and having them raised up a little bit, I decided to just lay them flush. They're more for a decorative piece anyway, so I'm drilling some holes a little bit bigger than the pegs of the handles and I'm just going to use my weld bond glue to glue them in. They sat nice and flush against the tray and I'm really happy with the result of these handles. And of course, it needs some distressing, so I'm just taking a little chip brush, going around the edges the way I like to, just pulling in from the edge, giving it a little bit of darkness on the corner of the edge, but also a little bit of a feathering effect coming through. I'm going to do that all the way around, and I'm also going to kind of add a few little darker splotches or more splotches not to make it look like enamel but just to make it a little bit more rustic and maybe it's worn off a little bit there. Then I'm going to take my chip brush and very lightly drag it across the whole of the letters and everything just to make it look a little bit not so bright white.
I really hope you enjoyed my Timber Tuesday projects today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed a little bit more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that red button. I would really appreciate your support. Don't forget to click the notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.